Hi guys, well what a month that has been both in the CPU and the GPU markets. There's been no shortage of product launches and today we are back with yet another one. And so joining the Nvidia Super Series, the Super Refresh, we've got the RTX 2080 Super. And it comes as no shock that, to the system that the 2080 Super is really designed to drop above the 2080 and then trail just behind the 2080 Ti. The GPU that we're looking at today is therefore not going to be revolutionary, it's more of a facelift to existing tech. Externally, the 2080 Super Founders Edition is identical to the 2070 Super. We get a dual fan arrangement and that new mirror reflective treatment. Under the hood, we're still dealing with Turing architecture and the TU-104 GPU. However, as we're going to see, there's been numerous adjustments to certain attributes, which should in turn optimize the performance. Now, you're going to pay less for the 2080 Super compared to the launch price of the original 2080 and so you're looking at around about 1209 in Australia 669 in the UK and then 699 in the US and if you look at that you know compared to the cheapest 2080 Ti uh, there is quite a big price cap and so today their aim is really to check out this new card and then towards the end we're going to see what the 2080 Super is like in terms of performance against the 2080 Ti. Before we get into our review, today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their new flagship Z390 Phantom Gaming X. This new board is packed with features which set it apart from other Z390 boards. It has 802.11ax, otherwise known as Wi-Fi 6, giving you support for that new wireless standard with greater bandwidth as well as providing bi-directional MIMO support. ASRock has given Gaming X a flexible integrated I.O. shield, so you're not going to struggle to fit it into your case. The PCI Express M.2 slots have been given this huge heatsink cover, which promises to keep your SSDs nice and cool, as well as keeping that GPU heat away from your drives. And on top of those features, this is an attractive board for a new config and is loaded with cutting edge tech to get the most out of an Intel system. For more details, check out that link in the description. Okay, and here is our 2080 Super. If you've seen a Founders Edition of any of the RTX 20 series cards, then you'll see very few distinctions here. From a visual point of view, the design, the shroud, is almost identical across the range. However, with the original RTX 20 series, we had matte black material being used, and now we have this highly reflective mirror effect. As we've reported in the past, the Founders Edition is a very sturdy, robust piece of kit. And not only are we dealing with high quality here, but it also looks the part too and it will add style to any config. This wouldn't be a graphics card without some LED lighting and the 2080 Super has a subtle approach to this trend by having the GeForce RTX branding illuminate when we have that power. There is no size difference between the 2070 and the 2080 Super cards, nor the original RTX 2080. And so for the length, 2080 Super is 266mm, for the width you're looking at just over 96mm, and then the height 38mm. And so not the largest graphics card, but still quite big, and worth taking into account if you have a small case. Now compared to the original 2080, the Super has more than just GPU and memory frequency adjustments. Tweaks to the CUDA cores and Tensor attributes play a significant role. When we look at the GPU and the memory clocks, the base clock is sat at 1650 and that boosts to 1815 MHz. And the memory clock operates at 1938 MHz. Those represent a 6 and a 10% increase over the 2080. It should be noted that we also get that 8 gig of GDDR6. And the card is also PCI Express 3.0 compliant, DirectX 12 ready, and it supports OpenGL 4.5. 2080 Super will occupy two spaces on your board and case, and on the back panel here we've got a familiar assortment of outputs. We get a single HDMI 2.0, triple DisplayPort 1.4s, and the USB Type-C for Virtual Link, and so support for multi-screen use, along with VR usage. Moving on to the power requirements, we have the same demand for a 6 plus 8 pin connection from the PSU. Nvidia are actually recommending a 650 watt power supply for this GPU. Since this is an RTX 20 series graphics card, we're now dealing with NVLink instead of SLI. And so this port here is found in its usual location near the input output panel on the edge. 
Now turning the car over on the reverse, there is a large metal back plate which wraps all the way around and it protects the PCB from getting scratched or from flexing. And again, no real changes here, just that super insignia in the center. Okay, so we've detached the cooler from the PCB and what a job that was. Over 30 screws and different sizes. And so essentially what we have here is the same dual fan design that was introduced for the RTX 20 series. It is a double capacity vapor chamber design with embedded heat pipe base plates. As we reported on the original RTX 20 series, the thermal pads are not the best quality. You can see here they're disintegrating and crumbling away. It's almost certain that because we've removed the cooler, we'll need to replace these pads with some Arctic replacements to ensure we get suitable cooling. With that cooler off the card, we can also check out the PCB. And so 2080 Super uses a 10 phase design. And at the heart of the 2080 Super is that huge NVIDIA TU-104 based on Turing architecture and that 12 nanometer process. You can see just how big that die size is. We have a faster GPU variant on the Super compared to the original 2080 in almost every attribute, including shader units. And the faster base and the boost clock, along with the faster memory, should give this card an advantage. And so it's now time to test out our Super, and we're going to be jumping into a number of games to reveal the performance. So for this, we're going to be comparing against the RTX 2080 Ti, just to see how far behind the Super really is. And so for that, we're going to be using the Zotac 2080 Ti Amp Edition. In terms of resolution, we're going to be going with 4K and maxing out at ultra detail preset. To capture our footage, we're going to be using the Ava Media 4K Ultra, which allows us to independently capture that footage without the GPU or the system taking a hit. In the full review on Vortest at night, we're going to be looking at other games and comparing this card to others, so be sure to check that out. And while we check out these games, we're also going to have GPUs that are running in the background to pick up on the max GPU temperature. So, let's begin.
Okay, and if we just jump out of our last game, we can check out the max GPU temperature. Which as you can see is almost in the mid 70s, but not too bad at all for a reference cooler. Alright, so that is what you guys can expect from the new RTX 2080 Super, and more specifically the Founders Edition. In that comparison that you just saw with the 2080 Ti, you can see that the Super isn't actually that far behind. So what I would suggest to you is if you don't have the coin for the 2080 Ti, you know, it's kind of out of your reach in terms of budget, then the 2080 Super is a good option to go with, especially so if you're coming up from the likes of the GTX 10 series or even a previous generation. Don't get me wrong, the TI is still in a completely different league. You know, it's not just about frame rates at ultra high definition. You'll notice that maxed out at 4K does create a few stumbling blocks for uh, the 2080 Super in some of the more demanding games. You know, 40 frames per second, for, for example, isn't exactly ideal. So I'd suggest that the TI is better for 4K and the Super probably more suited to 1440p, especially so if you want all of that eye candy enabled. So it'll be interesting to see the partner cards for the Super in the coming weeks because a custom PCB optimized phase design and better cooling will allow for for decent overclocks and that performance gap between these two cards here will undoubtedly close up. We will of course be exploring those partner cards very soon so stay tuned for that. So from a video point of view on this new uh, GPU here pretty much concludes it. If you want more detail, you want an overview, a bit of a deeper analysis then please head on over to the full review which is going to be on the screen in the description very soon. In today's poll guys we are asking you the question Will you be investing in this new RTX 2080 Super? Just cast your vote in the top right corner. A massive thanks to you guys for the channel support as we've just hit 30,000 subscribers. So a massive thanks to you for that. If you are new to our videos, please help us out. Subscribe to the channel for more tech related content just like this. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.